Thanks very much to the chairs and to the organizing committee. Once again, my name is Julie Lovshin. I'm an endocrinologist and clinician scientist at the University of Toronto. And I'm really delighted to be here today with all of you to review cardiorenal mechanisms of SGLT2 inhibitors in diabetes and beyond. Now, before I begin, here are my disclosures. As an endocrinologist in 2021, I feel very fortunate because we have two drug classes that are able to reduce complications in my patients with type 2 diabetes, including diabetic kidney disease, heart disease, obesity, and metabolic disease. The drug class we're going to focus in on today is SGLT2 inhibitors, and specifically focusing in on their favorable effects in the heart and in the kidney. And what better place to start than to look at the cardiovascular outcome trials that have been completed with the various SGLT2 inhibitors. As you can see from this slide, SGLT2 inhibitors are able to have favorable effects on reducing the risk for major adverse cardiovascular events, including CV death and hospitalization for heart failure. In particular, hospitalization for heart failure is where we see a very robust cardioprotective effect in reducing the risk in patients with type 2 diabetes, either at risk or with cardiovascular disease. Now, not shown on this slide is the fact that these SGLT2 inhibitors also had favorable effects on kidney outcomes. Because the cardiovascular outcome trials were designed for cardiovascular safety, they didn't necessarily enrich their population with uh, their heart failure or chronic kidney disease, but subsequent trials have, and that's what we're going to review now. We're going to start with the kidney trials that have been completed with SGLT2 inhibitors, the Credence trial with canagliflozin, which enrolled patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD, and DAPA-CKD, which enrolled patients with CKD with or without type 2 diabetes. As we can see across the board, both of these drugs significantly reduce the risk for adverse renal events, including doubling of serum creatinine, end-stage kidney disease, and either death from renal or CV causes. And we can see that uh, the signals were driven by renal protective effects as well as reducing adverse cardiovascular effects. So given these beneficial effects that we see with SGLT2 inhibitors, people have gone on to ask the question, well, what are the renal protective mechanisms responsible? So let's start off with what we do know because there are a lot of unanswered questions. What we know is that this is not secondary to A1C, and we just have to turn to the results of the DAPA-CKD trial, which showed renal protection irrespective of diabetes status. We also know this is not because of weight loss or blood pressure lowering. We know that the effects occur rapidly. We know the Kaplan-Meier curves separate quickly between three to six months. So whatever mechanism is responsible has to have a rapid onset. Now, people have jumped to the idea that this is secondary to a hemodynamic effect, and that's because when we initiate SGLT2 inhibitors, we often see that little EGFR dip between three to four weeks, which suggests that it's affecting a hemodynamic effect in the kidney. And so that has therefore pinpointed the mechanisms to be centered around naturesis. Now, there are several hypotheses out there. No one knows uh, the single or multiple mechanisms responsible. Here's just an example of some of the more popular mechanisms. If we start on our far right, uh, one of the pathways is known as tubular glomerular feedback. And the idea here is that because SGLT2 inhibitors cause proximal naturesis, they deliver more sodium to the distal kidney. And this is good for the diabetic kidney because it causes vasoafferent constriction. That reduces renal blood flow, reduces pressure in the kidney, reduces hyperfiltration, and slows an EGFR decline, which is what we see clinically. There are several biochemical pathways within the kidney that have been implicated, and there's too numerous to uh, list, but most of them uh, center around reducing inflammation, oxidative stress, and intrarenal RAS. And finally, energy metabolism pathways have been implicated. This one's interesting because the idea here is that tubules are doing less work. They're reabsorbing less sugar, less salt. Therefore, they're using less oxygen, and effectively, there's more oxygen available for the kidney. And that's important because hypoxia pathways, which are linked to fibrosis, 
uh, are down-regulated. And finally, I can't help but be optimistic that SGLT2 inhibitors reduce common risk factors for chronic kidney disease, but that can only be good for the diabetic and non-diabetic kidney. So we're now gonna transition into SGLD2 in the heart, and there have been two recent heart failure studies that have been completed with SGLD2 inhibitors, including DAPA-HF with dapagliflozin and Emperor Reduce with empagliflozin, completed in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, again, with or without type two diabetes. And as we can see in the primary outcome, both of these therapies were consistent with reducing a primary composite of reducing the risk for CV death or worsening heart failure, irrespective of diabetes status. And they also had favorable effects on renal outcomes. So just like the kidney, people have gone on to ask the question, well, what are the cardioprotective mechanisms of SGLT2 inhibitors? Again, here's what we do know, starting in panel C, we know that the mechanisms must be rapid because the Kaplan-Meier curves separate quickly. We know they're occurring independent of other CV therapies because SGLD2 inhibitors are additive to other diuretics that are already being treated for our patients with heart failure. Finally, in panel D, be, unlike the kidney, there are no SGLD2 channels in the heart. So a direct cardiac mechanism is a bit hard to envision at this point. And we know this is not occurring because of glycosuria. As we know, the heart failure studies had protective effects in patients with and without type two diabetes. So again, we do not know the mechanism for cardioprotection with SGLT2 inhibitors, but here are four of the more popularized theories. Starting in panel A, we know SGLT2 inhibitors are naturetics and that they reduce plasma volume. This could lead to less LV volumes and less remodeling. Panel B, we know that they increase hematocrit and this could be secondary to increases in erythropoietin, which could increase uh, cardiac tissue oxygenation. Uh, in panel C, many endocrine and biochemical pathways have been implicated. The one that I think is under investigated are the effects of SGLT2 inhibitors on sodium hydrogen ion exchangers. And finally, in panel D, we know that SGLT2 inhibitors modify traditional cardiovascular risk factors, and I can't help but be optimistic that that's a good thing for the failing heart. So in the landscape for 2021 for SGLT2 inhibitors, we've seen the translation of SGLT2 inhibitors beyond type 2 diabetes and into the non-diabetic kidney and into the non-diabetic failing heart. And I look forward to seeing uh, upcoming uh, data for SGLT2 inhibitors and looking at further translation of these drugs. I'm going to end there and thank you for your attention and look forward to answering your questions in the Q&A panel. Thank you.